Hello and welcome to STEM Stories with Mr. Ewing. This is part five on our journey through a magical unicorn year. We're going to talk about environmental learning spaces. And you're probably like, do we really need to know or have a different word for a classroom? And I think it's important that we do. I think it's really important that we define all the different types of environmental learning spaces. Now, we know that traditionally this is our learning space. This is where students, scholars go to learn, they come to school, brick and mortar building, into our classroom. And I want to talk about the fact that I believe I do that all the time for three. I need to figure that one out. There are three really major types of environmental learning spaces. Three. I almost did four again. Three. Maybe my environmental learning space here uh, needs to be some research. Anyway, the first one we know, in-person learning, our classrooms, the brick and mortar buildings, recreation centers, basically where scholars all come together in one particular space. And while I really believe that this is a super important learning space, it's not the only learning space. And I probably am going to put this out there that I don't believe it's the most important learning space. And I know that I'm going to get some pushback for, from you. And remember I talked about in my first video that if I say something that bothers you, upsets you, frustrates you, or challenges you, dig deep inside and ask why what I just said may cause a reaction that I don't believe this is the most important learning space our scholars have. Second environmental learning space is the residential learning space. This space hasn't, isn't something new. It's been around for a very long time. Our families have been our educators since I believe probably people were having children. They pass along generational pieces of information. Whether it's sitting around doing a read aloud together or you know, it's playing in a tent, it's enjoying each other, it's in the backyard. There's a lot of ha learning that has always happened in the home. Currently, there's just more. And it's still a residential learning space and we need to embrace that it happens there. Um, we also need to embrace that learning can happen there without a lot of tools. And I know that those devices are super important, but I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, if something got delivered to my house, like a refrigerator, and my parents gave me the refrigerator box we're talking not days weeks of play inside that box and the things that it could become it was a train it was a space station it was a house i mean it was everything it wasn't a box it was everything but a box and we need to foster that kind of creativity especially in the residential learning space now I'm going to talk about probably the most overlooked and underutilized learning space of them all. To me, this is the most important learning space that exists, and it is locational learning, the locational learning space, everywhere our students are outside of school and the home. That's a tremendous amount of learning space because, as we talked about earlier, only 20% of our waking day is spent in a classroom. That's almost 75% of the waking day spent outside of the classroom. And that isn't something new. Kids have been pulling together, coming together, learning from each other, playing together, creating environmental learning spaces for probably the beginning of time since kids have been kids. It's what they do. It's what they do best. And they actually, and I've said this before, and I know it's gonna irk some people, they probably learn more from each other than from us. And as an educator, that hurts me, but it's the truth. And it's our job to actually embrace this and make it better. So kids need to be outside. They need to be playing. And I know this environment right now doesn't allow for that, but we can create uh, opportunities for kids to come together in a virtual world where they can, can still socialize in the way that they're actually used to socializing. Now, we need to also harness the power 
of this learning space, this learning of locational space. I don't know if you ever did this as a kid, but I could sit and play in a puddle for hours and search for things. And sometimes, especially if you're out in the woods or near a creek, there's a lot of things to be found. Have you ever had a, a field trip outside to a field or gone? I, used, I worked in a district in Seattle, the Highline School District, and our district had its own camp. And for a week, we would take our scholars out camping. And it was one of the most amazing experiences, not only for me, but for a group of scholars I worked with who never got outside the city. And the learning that happened there was tenfold of what I could have done in a classroom. Museums. I still go to museums and just wander with no particular purpose. And the things I come across and learn blow my mind. It's not a classroom. Or actually it is a classroom. It's just not a, that traditional definition of a classroom. We take our kids on field trips all the time. This is one of my hands down most favorite locations to learn. This is Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. But I love historical villages because it allows you, it's almost like a time machine that allows you to step into history and be a participant in learning history and engaging in history in a way that puts history around us. It is one of the most amazing opportunities to witness, to experience as a kid, to step into a world that sometimes we didn't even know existed, that we had seen in books or we'd heard of, or never even heard of, but historical villages and historical homes, one of my favorite locational learning spaces. Playtime, being a, given a chance to dress up and be someone else is another really amazing locational learning experience. It's one of my favorite things. And the home, like, there are so many things that happen, and this is residential, that kids do and learn and get to experience that we forget to harness as educators. And yes, being in a virtual world is a locational learning experience because that little tool right there allows this scholar to travel the world and actually travel through space. So it's super important that we understand the three different types of environmental learning spaces. In-person learning, residential learning, and the most important one of all, locational learning spaces. Embrace it. It's here to stay. It's not going away. It's always been around. We need to harness the power of every learning space for our